The honorary degree will now be conferred. Mr. President, will you present the honorary degree candidate, Richard Enriquez. Stand so they cannot see you all. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, Richard Enriquez is a prominent figure in Canadian and world architecture. Possessed of a transformative imagination and an artist's eye, he has spent his life engaged in the search for meaning through art and architecture. In so doing, he has made a unique and lasting contribution not only to Vancouver's architectural and cultural legacy, but also to Canada's. Born and first educated in Jamaica, he studied architecture at the University of Manitoba where he graduated in 1964. He subsequently earned a Master of Arts in Architecture and Urban Design at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He began practicing in Canada in 1966, and three years later founded Henrikas Partners Architects in Vancouver. Since then, he has designed some of our most distinctive, innovative, and striking buildings. The diversity of his built environments is truly impressive. A few of the most notable examples would include Eugenia Place, the Sylvia Hotel Tower, and the Sinclair Center, each a vibrant Vancouver landmark. With equal inventiveness, he has designed memorable institutional buildings, such as the British Columbia Cancer Research Center, the Kinesiology Wing of Al Shram Science Center, the Michael Smith Laboratory, Trent University's Environmental Sciences Building, the Capilano University Library, and the Birch Building. Each of Richard Enriquez's creative contributions signifies that for him, architecture is about much more than function. In imagining his built environments, he respects human ritual, incorporates accessible symbolism, and draws on history, both real and invented. As a true artist, he infuses every work with meaning. His buildings invite contemplation as much as use, for to enter any one of them is to become part of a narrative complete with symbol, mythology, and history. Richard Enriquez generously shares his vision of architecture through lectures that take him across North America and to Europe and South America. His designs and sculptures have been exhibited in many venues across this country. He was an invited participant in the Venice Architecture Biennale in 1996 and the Canadian representative at the International Biennale in Buenos Aires. It is truly fitting that the firm he founded so many years ago is now the design firm and his son Gregory Enriquez, the lead architect of the Woodwards redevelopment, the transformational project which includes the new home of SFU's School for the Contemporary Arts and will have significant effects in reshaping the future of Vancouver and its downtown east side. His work has earned him many honors and accolades at the international, national, and provincial levels. In 2005, the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada, of which he is a fellow, recognized him with its gold medal. And today, we pay tribute to his originality and brilliance. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you now confer upon Richard Enriquez the degree Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Richard Enriquez, by the virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Mr. Enriquez will be hooded by Dr. John Driver, Vice President of Academics, and Ms. Kate Ross, Registrar. Congratulations.
It is with pleasure that I now call on Dr. Richard Enriquez for his convocation address. Chancellor Louis, President Stevenson, members of the board, uh, faculties, members of the faculty, honored guests, graduates in arts and social sciences, family and friends. My warmest congratulations to the, the, the graduates in arts and social sciences for 2009. It is an extraordinary honor and pleasure to share this occasion with you, with your family and friends. My sincere thanks to those who nominated me and to the university for conferring on me this degree. Graduates, as with your degrees, mine should be shared by those who have supported me and are part of my personal and professional life. Many of them are here today, including two of the most special, my grandson and granddaughter, Jacob, and Sarita Henriquez. Graduates, I'm sure that every one of you has a fascinating personal story. I suspect that more than a few of these have to do with ancestral belonging to Canada or immigration from foreign lands. All of you must realize, though, <clears throat> how fortunate you are, firstly, to live in this amazing country, and secondly, to be graduating from this amazing university. I guarantee you that these two advantages alone will ensure for you a better future than the vast majority of uh, people on the planet. Since we are at slightly different places in our careers, I should like to offer a few observations. Now, I know that um, um, th these are not going to be life-changing uh, comments that I'm going to make. I, I don't remember a single thing that was said at my graduation. <laughs> and so, um, uh, notwithstanding that, however, <clears throat> I would like to say a few things about a strong support system, on the one hand, and balance between life and work. When I was 12, I joined a Boy Scout troop. Carved into a rock overlooking our campsite were the words, no man liveth unto himself. Now these words meant absolutely nothing to us at the time, particularly if we had forgotten to dig a trench around the tent and were flooded out in the middle of the night. <clears throat> but I suggest to you that it would be wise to strive to develop balanced lives that includes people in addition to those that are part of your chosen careers. I speak of the involvement in culture, community, and with family and friends. I speak of caring for your health and of the enjoyment and preservation of nature. Take the time to nurture your body and your spirit and to maintain a support network of people who you will all need. You all absolutely need people who can mentor you love you, and who are, permit, who are committed to the survival, your survival as a human being. I have been most fortunate to be supported for most of my life. I grew up in Jamaica as part of a large extended family. From the time I was 10, I dreamed that I was going to be an architect and that my grand uncle would teach me architecture. He was an artist, architect, engineer, and he was my hero. He took me to see buildings under construction, and he taught me to, to love the smell of paint. His son, Morris, a gifted aeronautical engineer and architect, mentored me as, as a young student when I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship uh, to attend university at the university, uh, to, to study architecture at the University of Manitoba. I fell in love with an amazing lady who I married in third year architecture. My wife, Carol, has supported me for 46 years in every possible way. While I finished university, <clears throat> she worked, and, uh, and also in my office in the early years. 
She took the major role in, de in, in bringing up our children while I concentrated on developing a practice. She also launched her own career as founder and director of Arts Umbrella. Forty years ago, I started a community-based architectural firm that has evolved and grown over the years. Many dedicated and talented people have contributed to the production of the buildings we designed. Our son Gregory, who joined the firm 20 years ago, has made a name for himself as an architect. He is my partner and has given our firm new energy and is directing some of the most challenging and meaningful work that we are now doing. One such project is, <clears throat> is the Woodward's Development Downtown, home to the University of Manitoba, University, Simon Fraser University's School for the Tempor Contemporary Arts. This project, in effect a microcosm of the city, con contains a diverse mix of uses. It will be home to a wide cross-section of people. Woodward's is not only about architectural design, the work that is done in our firm, or contemporary art education, the work that Simon Fraser does. It is about creating that which is much more important, culture and a balanced community. Culture and community give meaning to our lives and promote the values that make us truly human. We are now in a digital age. Each community's unique history, culture, and knowledge can now be easily shared with people in other parts of the world. I hope that environmental and, e and economic imperatives in the world will encourage us to focus more of our energy away from the production of objects of consumption towards cultural pursuits. If this change occurs, then the role of Simon Fraser University's School for the Contemporary Arts will play in the community and become that more significant. The career opportunities that I have had in Vancouver, along with support from my family, friends, and colleagues, has allowed me to pursue my dream of being an architect, to raise a family, be part of a community, and to have what I think has been a balanced life. Although I know that your immediate goals concern finding work in your chosen fields, I am confident that each of you will find places for yourself that you can call home as I have. I know that you cannot wait to start this new chapter in your life and to live your own dreams. I am confident, however, that with the education you have had from Simon Fraser University, you will rise to the challenge with integrity, creativity, intelligence, and passion. Graduates, I wish you on this most important day good health and continued success. And once again, thank you, Simon Fraser University, for this wonderful and unexpected honor. And thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Henriquez.